Hello everyone, welcome to the video on key concepts in glycolysis. In this video, I will explain the important points in glycolysis which are required for competitive examinations. First point, glycolysis is a universal energy yielding pathway. The reason why it is called as universal is glycolysis occurs in prokaryotes, eukaryotes, aerobics and anaerobics. Glycolysis does not require oxygen, hence it takes place in anaerobics also. There are certain cells and tissues in human beings which are solely depend upon glycolysis to get energy. Brain cells, red blood cells, renal medulla and span cells. Now, renal medulla always has got hypoxic condition, very low oxygen is there. So, when low oxygen is there, citric acid cycle, electron transport cycle cannot take place. So, it is heavily dependent upon glycolysis. Similarly, brain cells always needs highest amount of glucose for its energy production. Now, glycolysis, all the reactions of glycolysis takes place in cytoplasm. All the enzymes are present in cytoplasm. So, if any cell which do not have mitochondria is heavily depend upon glycolysis. Red blood cells do not have mitochondria. So, the only energy yielding pathway is glycolysis. If mitochondria is there, citric acid cycle, oxidative phosphorylation will take place. Because mitochondria is not there, red blood cell is completely dependent upon glycolysis for energy. Now, briefly what happens in glycolysis is, one glucose molecule gives two pyruvate molecules, two NADH molecules and two water molecules. Just remember this reaction, one, pyru uh, one glucose breaks down and gives two pyruvates, two NADH, two ATP and two water molecules. Now, see the net yield of ATP is two ATP. Understand this one. When you see the entire pathway from the glycolysis, you get 4 ATP. But at the beginning, two of the reactions uses ATP. So out of 4 ATP, two are used. So net gain of ATP is only 2 ATPs. Now the reactions in which 2 ATP are used is conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. An ATP goes, transfers its phosphate to glu glucose at the 6th position. So glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate. So this reaction uses 1 ATP. Now second reaction, fructose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Again ATP transfers a phosphate, so fructose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So these two reactions uses ATP. The other important thing, glycolysis also forms two high energy yielding molecules. One, one of the molecule is 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Now see this 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is converted to 3-phosphoglycerate. The one phosphate is transferred directly to ADP to give ATP. Because of this 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate can produce ATP, this is called as high energy molecule. First point. Second one, the process of this one is known as substrate level phosphorylation. Understand this concept. So we have two different kinds of phosphorylation are up there. Oxidative phosphorylation, substrate level phosphorylation. Oxidative phosphorylation takes place in mitochondria. In mitochondria, electrons are transferred and when the when electrons are transferred energy is released using that energy ATP is formed how ATP is formed to ADP when phosphate is transferred so this reaction is phosphorylation electron removal is known as oxidation so the overall process is known as oxidative phosphorylation this is what happens in mitochondria this is the reason why we call mitochondria as powerhouse of the cell it releases ATP in case of glycolysis, from a direct substrate, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate releases a phosphate which is transferred to ADP and forms ATP. So from the substrate, phosphorylation is happening, hence it is known as substrate level phosphorylation. One. Second one, phosphoenol pyruvate is converted to pyruvate. Again, this is a high energy molecule, phosphoenol pyruvate. It transfers its phosphate to ADP and forms ATP. So there are two substrate level phosphorylations takes place in glycolysis and in these two steps involves two high energy yielding molecules. One is 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, second one is phosphoenol pyruvate. This is it. So the important things are the net gain of ATP in glycolysis is 2 ATP. Though it is forming 4, 2 are being used. Now the other thing, in case of, uh, in presence of oxygen, if aerobically uh, 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 glucogen is complete, sorry, in aerobic condition, if glucose is completely catabolized, what happens is from glucose, pyruvate is formed. This is, this is what is called as glycolysis. Pyruvate is converted to acetyl-CoA, acetyl-CoA gets into citric acid cycle and the citric acid cycle generates electron carrying molecules NADH and FAD. 
these are transported to mitochondria and from mitochondria ATP will get it. Now in glycolysis there are there is a generation of two NADH molecules. Now each NADH when it gets into electron transport chain each NADH can give 2.5 ATP. So in glycolysis you are getting two NADH. So each one is 2.5 so both the molecules can give 5 ATP. Now understand this one if a question asks about if aerobically glucose is catabolized only from glycolysis how many ATPs are produced? Understand this one aerobically catalyzed from glycolysis how many ATPs are produced? Directly with substrate level phosphorylation we get two ATPs. If NADH gets into mitochondria from each NADH you get 2.5 and totally 5 ATPs are there. 5 plus 2 totally 7 ATPs gain will be there. Now again understand this one in older literature each NADH will give 3 ATP. It, this is what is given in old books. But the new research says that each NADH gives 2.5 ATP. A small discrepancy is there. But stick to each NADH gives 2.5 ATP. So these are all the key points in glycolysis. I hope this is useful. Thank you.